guys, we got a lot more. You ready? Come on, we're yeah. gonna do this. Is next guy's over there. Your friend, very funny man, ladies and gentlemen, Bob Dean. Yeah, give it up for Dobbs, your Dave Terrace. Yeah. Okay, how's everyone tonight? Yay! Fun day, fun day! You said it's fun day? Yeah. There you go, how'd it go? <laughs> Monday is my Sunday. Woo! I'm a bartender, but I'll talk about that later. <laughs> I'm going to tell you all what it's all about. Let me ask you something. <sighs> Do you think it's appropriate to ask me to charge your fucking phone when you sit out my bar? I have one thing to say. <laughs> Go to hell. Hell yeah. All right? Okay, I'm going to start off by saying this. You know what? About, I was raised to be a really nice man. A couple of years ago, I'm in the Vaughn's supermarket. I'm sitting there trying to decide whether to buy pumpernickel or wheat. Pumpernickel or wheat. <laughs> Little cat shorts in my polo shirt, and this very short, very fat black woman is strutting the eye like this. And I, coming from the south, I take a step back and bluntly say, pardon me. She jams her hand in my face like that. She goes, out of my way, reptile. <laughs> and she get walking. Honest to God. And I went, <laughs> did she just, no, did she, she did, she called me a friggin' reptile, so I followed her up to the checkout area, and I tapped her on the shoulder, and she turned around, and I said, I beg your pardon, did, did you just call me a reptile, and she put her hand on her hip, and she started doing that Jerry Springer neck thing back and forth like this, that I've never been able to do, and she said, that's what I said. Before she said the word, I said, let me tell you something. It is 2015, and I'm not afraid to bitch slap a woman in public. <laughs> I think you should just go. And she did. She ran out the front door, and like, just popping up my head. And then I look at everybody in the chicken area. They're standing there holding their children, and there's total silence. And I said, she started it. <laughs> you know, the older I get, the more loud, the cynical, and just plain mean I become. Yeah. And you know what? I don't care. <laughs> I laughed at work the other day. This kid goes, Get your face new. I was like, This is your future. <laughs> I am constantly yelling at little kids, Get off of my lawn! I live on the second floor. <laughs> I'm free and long. <laughs> and I am just, uh, you know, I just got a new Volkswagen Jetta. So the first new car that I've had in 30 years. That backup camera thing is fabulous because I live right by Stoner Park where all the skateboard kids are. <laughs> I cannot tell you how many I've noticed that are underneath the wheels and I'm like, hey. <laughs> Been a bartender for 34 years. Wow. Yep. Got a real job once. <laughs> My father called me for a Lauderdale. He said, son, your mother and I paid a great deal of money for that education. We think it's about time you came back to Nashville and got a real job. So I did. You know, one of those office positions for the future. Any job that has benefits means it's a job that you hate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I tried to commit suicide by jumping out of my office window, but it was on the first floor. <laughs> anyway, back in the bar tanning, 34 years. And I have to tell you, I love it. Many of my regulars are here, and you're great supporters of my comedy. I'm not much to look at, but I pour a double every time. Here's how it goes, ladies and gentlemen. 95% of y'all are great, but here's the other 5%. It's hot in here. It's cold in here. The valley scratched my car. Bobby, I stole Do you have a black napkin? <laughs> Do you have Tito's vodka? I want that dressing on the side. We're friends with the owner. Can we have a booth? <laughs> and my favorite now is okay, that whole on the side thing. Thank you, Meg Ryan, that friggin' one Harry Met Sally movie. Now it's all about, I want everything on the side. Hey, for me, sir, you with the stretch, are you on the phone? <laughs> you better be thinking about me, buddy. You better be tweeting about me, BobSurleyComic.com. <laughs> anyway, where was I? Back to bartending. You know what? My motto is, if you have an airbag, have another. <laughs> and you know what's got to be 
control these uh, Uber drivers. They're stopping everywhere. And this is another tip for everybody, ladies and gentlemen. Taking an Uber is a good thing, but have your I'm not gonna say the word. Have your ass in gear and be ready to go when that car pulls up. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You got yours? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You know, don't be in there going, I'm Mary Cecilia, you know, here, right without my number, one, 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 one. Uh -oh. That's not my point. <laughs> Women in bars. Uh -oh. Guys are cool. Guys are cool. Oh, they're cool. They're like, they're like, shot the beer, martini, you know, gin and tonic. Ladies, love you. What's but it goes name? like this. It goes like this. Can I see your cocktail menu? <laughs> That's when my left eye starts switching, and when you pick up that mixology menu, I know that you're gonna look at it while there's... Hey, I'm talking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, give, give us the comments a little credit, please. I was catching her up, I was catching her up. Well, Sorry, I'm I, I, I do sign if you need that. I, I Oh, with all due respect, with all due respect, you know what? I'm a narcissist. I need a little friggin' attention. Don't make me take my pants off because I'll do it. Thank you all. I do it. Just like that. She's gonna fucking say this is not what I wanted. And then you make it, you pour it. She goes, This is what I wanted. Of course it's not what you wanted. <laughs> women in bars. White women in bars. <laughs> We'd like to take every one of your 36 wines by the glass. Because we've recently been to Napa. <laughs> so yeah, it's such a good time. And we want something that's earthy, fluffy, jammy, and cheap. <laughs> Black women in bars. <laughs> Colada, and I want extra strawberries in that pina colada. I'm not gonna pay those extra strawberries in that pina colada. I can't taste no alcohol in there. Persian women. Ugh. It is your job to read the wine list. You're the help. I do not read the wine list. It is your job to read the wine list. True story, true story. A couple years ago, I'm walking through the dining room with some plates in my arms. There's two Persian women my age dripping in golden diamonds. Like every time I put a gallon of gas in my Buick, their bank account goes ching 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 ching. <laughs> and uh, completely out of the blue, like the bitch that put her hand on my face in the supermarket, this woman goes, look at you! Hey man, if you're age doing this for a living, you should be ashamed! And they laughed, and the whole doctor got quiet. And they were like, ha ha, and I stopped like this, and I go, I can do this for a living because I don't have someone like you, and I'm sucking the life out of me. <laughs> go to hell. What's the, a, a Persian woman in a black Range Rover from Beverly Hills? <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> Asian women, they never order booze, they just take pictures of the food. And this Hispanic woman, she sat out at my bar a couple weeks ago, and she started speaking to me in Spanish, and I'm, I'm just over it. I don't give a shit what you think or what you, I am not a friend, blah, 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 blah. But friggin' speak English, okay? Friggin' speak English. Don't be speaking lazy. Right? It doesn't mean that we are superior, but the, uh, anyway, back to what I was saying is that <laughs> this woman started ordering me Spanish, and I was just over it. And I said, you know what, ma'am? I do not speak Spanish. And she goes, are you some kind of racist? <laughs> <laughs> me? <laughs> it's like a fourth time in a week somebody told me a racist. <laughs> I make people to crack a racist, I'll tell you right now. You're white. Right? Because I'll be a white, that's right. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a white man of privilege. Right? Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something. You have no idea how hard I had it growing up. No idea. Our swimming pool didn't have a diving board. <laughs> This whole white man of privilege crap. 
<laughs> you know what? My brother got a brand new BMW. I had to drive a two-year-old Buick. <laughs> a quarter of a mile from my high school. When everybody else went to Barbados on the senior class trip, I only got to go to Daytona Beach. You have no idea how hard that is. <laughs> so please, give it up. I'm so tired of the white man privilege crack. <laughs> All right? I mean, what the hell else am I supposed to do? What, what am I supposed to do as a white man of privilege to make it better? I am a 13-year volunteer at the Brell Institute in Hollywood, California. Honest to God, I read to the blind. I foster cats in my home for 11 years. Right now, I have five cats in a one-bedroom apartment, three of whom are black. And you throw the best news to get off my friggin' back. I'm no cracker race. Let me tell you something. I am white. I'm Christian. I smoke cigarettes inside my home. I eat red meat. Yes. I'm gay. Yes. I don't speak a word of Spanish. I do not have a fake handicap placard. I do not have a fake marijuana card. And I do not have a fake service dog in my purse. I am a friggin' minority in Los Angeles. I let the cat on the bag, I'm a homosexual. I'm a bear. I'm like the only queer in town that hates bags. But I'm not insult some homo by saying that. <laughs> Most of my friends are, my, my, my buddies are straight. And, 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 and not, honestly, God, 100% all American heterosexual guys. Well, we out drinking, but you have questions, we have questions. So we'll be outside smoking a cigarette, which I make no apologies for. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> so they'll be like, so, so Bob, what's the deal? Like, uh, are you a, a, are you a, a top or a bottom? And I'm like, depends on how much scotch I've had. <laughs> and they're like, oh, oh, oh okay, okay. Oh, so let me ask you another question. Um, like, is it customary for the pitcher or the catcher to pay for dinner? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, pretty much the, the picture. And then I'm so over it, I'm like, hey, let me tell you something. You see that guy over there in the corner smoking a cigarette? And they're like, yeah. And I go, you know how you think about a beautiful woman in fishnet hose and red stilettos with her legs up in the air? And he's like, yeah. And I go, that's what I'm thinking about, except for some high tops and some jock shorts. <laughs> and then they're like, uh, uh, uh. I'm like, oh, thank you. I picked up my parents when I was 28 years old on Christmas Eve. Oh, shit. Yeah, talk about break of being a cocktail party buzz kill. I come from this huge football family. My dad was the quarterback of this high school football team. My mother was a cheerleader for the rival high school. I played a little, my brother played. Hey, you know, we, we, America, we love football, right? Come to this little. Yeah. All right? There you go. So, I said, Mom, I have something to tell you. After two more teams. I said, I, I, I'm homosexual. And she put, and she's a, she was a sir, God rest her soul. And you know, in, 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 in Yugoslavia, which is now whatever, you know, they kill people over there like that. And my, she put her hands on my shoulders and she said, you're my son and I will love you forever. And I said, Mom, it was beautiful for that moment. And I said, Mom, I have something else to tell you. I hate football. And her fingernails went into my shoulders like this. And she looked at my father, she looked at me, she looked at my father, she looked at me, she looked at my father. She said, did you hear what your son just said? <laughs> I said I'm a bear. When I'm in an intimate situation, my partner Sherry Pillow Talk is. I fell asleep in the pool last year. You know, these many crops are below my back. Anybody out there manscape? Anybody? Chris. Chris. Really? Hell yeah! And you call me a queer. True enough. You know, I was in the 24 hour fitness in Santa Monica last year, right? These two guys, nice lean young men, they're, they're not like, one guy one got shaved his testicles like this, the other guy shaved his ass, and they're talking real macho. And I'm getting out of the shower, and one guy goes, man, Tom Brady got screwed. And it just slipped out of my mouth. I go, look, you guys are in the 24 hour fitness in West Hollywood because you're both getting screwed right now. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> oh my goodness. My nieces and nephews are so cute. They're like, Uncle Bob, tell us about the 80s. <laughs> Just bartender in Miami in the 80s. <laughs> and I say, you know what, kids? The movie Scarface was entirely accurate. <laughs> pot was pot. It was $40 for a big amount like this. And if you were lucky, you might score some Maui Wowie or Thai steak. <laughs> okay. It was me. Not me. It was me. Do you have any idea how freaking annoying that is? Yeah. I mean, I didn't know Seriously, I mean, if, you're, if, you're, if your mother is not in the hospital or your house is on fire, then turn the fucking phone off. You know what? Don't get me started, because I'm an entertainer up here right now, but I will get you on the side and I'll tell you all about it. Speaking English and texting. 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 You know what? I'm going to go off my whole act here for a moment. You young people, you, you know, millennial, whatever the fuck that means. This guy came to the garden today. He's wearing a blue blazer. He's like 28 years old. Blue blazer, khaki pants, nice tie. I'm serious. And he walks up the door, he comes up and he goes, I want a, a Belvedere martini, shake it violently, and I would like your baby. Oh. <laughs> I did. Oh. I was expecting to be called to HR, but HR happens to be one of my best friends. So. <laughs> Drugs, let me tell you something. Legalizing marijuana, please, give me a fucking break. All right? Now, cannabis oil, is great. Cannabis oil is, is a, in my opinion, a cure for cancer. Okay? But all the, you know, and, and there's so much wonderful thing. If you really have glaucoma, that's it's great. But this whole, yeah, 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 uh, I got a narrow eye tie. Please, we are already so fucking stupid. Who needs to throw that into the mix? All right? But Miami in the 80s, I've got pink Peruvian cocaine for $20 a gram, and they shaved it right off the block like it was wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ecstasy was real. From one factory in Houston, not this HGY ass crappy kids are doing today. Let me tell you something, I don't do drugs anymore, but this was me when I did. This is pop. <laughs> oh my god, I only have $67 in my checking account. <laughs> I gotta watch my car. Why did I finish college? <laughs> okay. Yeah, baby. It was like, <sighs> you got any gin? You got any scotch? I don't know what that's like. You know what that's like? Can I smoke in here? <laughs> the ecstasy was my favorite. It's like, <laughs> 20 bucks for a rip off, man. I don't feel anything. You feel anything? It's been like a half an hour. Why the fuck I'm so pissed off? Oh, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. Let's dance. <laughs> I just turned 56 in February. All right. And, 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 and um, my friend was saying, I, went, I met the same barber for 13 years. I like, went the other day, and he goes, wow, there's this really weird-ass black hair growing right out of your cheek. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming for you. It's coming for you. Gravity. <laughs> what was my point about that? Oh, is that... I'm a smoker. I make no apologies for it. I only smoke cigarettes because they make me look so cool. <laughs> yeah. Remember that commercial? California, speak up about secondhand smoke. Say something, right? I kept auditioning for the guy that's on the patio below going, <laughs> and blowing the smoke upstairs into the baby's room. <laughs> If you don't like the smoke, you go outside. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> Smokers, okay, this is something else too. In the bar business, this is something that really killed it. In, the, in like 93, 94, the, the introduction of the Visa check card. <laughs> now, see, it's okay because he's taking pictures. Anyway, we want to watch this. So, the Visa check card, it sucks, man. You know why? Because in the past, people used cash in the bar. 
All right? It was a quicker transaction. And when you get drunk, you just leave somebody on the floor. Sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Every night I pick up at least 100 bucks with this big size 14. <laughs> and another reason why you should be smoking to bars is because people leave drugs. <laughs> and the mom says, but like I said, I'm doing drugs before. <laughs> Uh, I have a driver's Tourette's. <laughs> I do. I can't keep my mouth shut. I have arthritis in this hand like this because I've been doing this for 35 years. <laughs> On the 405 Santa Monica Boulevard a couple of weeks ago, I flipped off this chola, I guess they're called. A really mean Hispanic woman. <laughs> in a Camry with a baby in a child seat in the back. She had the child all tucked in properly. But of course, she cut across, you know, four lanes traffic, so I did the natural thing. So I'm sure you're like, she's smart. She gets out of her car. And comes up. She's like, and I roll the window down. I'm like, I'm like, she goes, come on, get out of the car. And I'm like, are you serious? She's like, come on, come on, get out of the car. I'm like, nice eight, Grandma. And then she got a golf club out of the trunk. She did it. So I kind of went over the curb, and you know what? It's like driving along. Anybody's ever ridden in the car with me? <laughs> Anybody's ever? There's several people in this room that ridden the car with me. <laughs> I can't keep my mouth shut. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's such a beautiful day. We're driving up the PCH. I can't wait till I get to Neptune's Net because I'm gonna have crab cakes and a couple of cold beers. <laughs> and then right, and then we'll go across here. You motherfucking bitch, Chinese chicken, a five series BMW that's obviously on a six year lease. Do you not know which way to be in? And I can't wait to get there because, yeah. <laughs> Y'all been very kind. Thank you, that's my time. I'm Bob You can follow me at BobReserveTheComic.com and my new podcast, The Bob Bean Show, on Twitter, I mean, on iTunes and Stitcher. Thank you very much.